I love reading your comments and making videos about topics that interest you. It helps me learn something as well and not get too lazy. Today I wanted to talk about vitamin D. Is your vitamin D level too low? Should you take vitamin D supplements? And if so, how much is the right amount? Hey guys, my name is Dr. Sam. A few of you have recently asked me to make a video on vitamin D, and this is quite a big topic, but I thought I'd touch on what vitamin D is useful for, the symptoms of vitamin D deficiency, and should you start vitamin D supplements? So firstly, what is vitamin D and where do you get it from? Well, you probably already know of it as the sunshine vitamin. And vitamin D is an extremely important vitamin that functions more like a hormone and every cell in your body has a receptor for it. There are two forms of vitamin D. So there's vitamin D2 and D3. Vitamin D3 is made from the cholesterol in your skin when it's exposed to the sun. And UVB rays from the sun is by far the best source of vitamin D for your body. But you can also get vitamin D2 from plants and some fish like cod liver oil, salmon and mushrooms. I'll link all the foods you can get vitamin D from in the description. Why does your body need vitamin D? Well, for a long time, vitamin D was known to be important for bones, but now we have lots of evidence that vitamin D is an anti-inflammatory and plays an essential role in the immune system. In fact, some excellent studies have shown that taking a vitamin D supplement at normal doses was associated with decreased death rates of all causes. Oh my God! What diseases are associated with low vitamin D? Well, people who have low vitamin D are more likely to have cardiovascular events, to go on and develop type 1 and type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis, depression, multiple sclerosis, and chronic pain. Vitamin D seems to have a role in preventing cancer and surviving cancers. And please note that there are hundreds of studies on the associations with vitamin D, but these don't mean the relationship is causal. However, clearly vitamin D has an extremely crucial role in our health. What about vitamin D deficiency? Well, it's estimated that about 1 billion people worldwide have low vitamin D. And why is this? Well, not surprisingly, there are some groups of people more likely to be vitamin D deficient. So the first group is in older people. The skin gets thinner with age, which makes it harder for the skin to make vitamin D3 when it's exposed to sunlight. Also, they spend more time indoors, especially in rest homes. And UVB rays can't penetrate through windows. So even sitting next to a sunny window doesn't get you any vitamin D. No one would make that connection. The second is people who have darker skin and because they have more melanin in their skin, it acts like a natural sunscreen, which means their body can't produce as much vitamin D, especially in the winter. And I see this commonly in New Zealand and I prescribe vitamin D to my darker skin patients over winter for this. The third group, which actually leads on nicely, is to people who live far from the equator, so the UK, New Zealand, Canada and Scandinavia, over the winter months in countries far away from the equator, vitamin D levels plummet due to lack of adequate sunlight. And even if you are stark naked outside at midday in the middle of winter, your skin still can't make enough vitamin D as the sunlight is too weak. Frank? Hey, honey. Hey! What the hell are you doing? We're streaking! We're going up through the quad to the gymnasium! There are some conditions which make it harder to absorb fat, which is needed to make vitamin D. And these people usually need supplements. I'll link these conditions in the description for you. So is your vitamin D level too low? The only way to know is to get your vitamin D blood level tested. A level below 20 nanograms per mil or 30 nanomoles per liter is low and usually requires supplements. What are the symptoms of vitamin D deficiency? Basically, it's everything that sounds like you are really run down. So getting sick with colds and flu-like infections constantly, feeling chronically tired, having bone pain and muscle or lower back pain, depression and low mood symptoms, and slow healing time of wounds and infections, and also hair loss. Should you start vitamin D supplements? Okay, let's get down to the nitty gritty here. 
Too much vitamin D in the form of tablets can make you sick and can cause toxicity. So it's all about getting the balance right. Those of you who know me will be tired of me saying, if you can get it naturally, then do that, which I still strongly believe in, by the way. But I'd far rather go out in the sunshine and get some melatonin and vitamin D naturally than stay inside popping supplements. Despite saying that, I have to confess and tell you that I take vitamin D supplements, but only for the three months in the winter time. And this was because I wanted to try a personal experiment to see if I got less sick over winter doing this, and it actually worked for me, so now I take them every winter. Willow bark? Magnesium? No, thank you. Sure. Really good for hangovers. Okay, I'll take one. What is the right way to take vitamin D supplements? Well, I have seen quite a few patients uh, who have started vitamin D and then ended up going overboard on them and feeling terrible. So let me explain how you should do this. First, you need to make sure you get the right type of supplement, which contains vitamin D3. It should say cholecalciferol on the pill bottle. Then have a look at the dose. I take one 1.25 milligram capsule of cholecalciferol on the first of the month for three months over winter. And this is also a common dose prescribed to people at risk of vitamin D deficiency, but they take the capsule once a month over a year. And if you're extremely deficient in vitamin D, your doctor may prescribe a loading dose first before starting the monthly vitamin D capsules. And if you prefer to take a daily dose, you can take up to 100 micrograms of cholecalciferol a day instead. And this is ample to keep yourself stocked up on vitamin D. Most people don't need this in the summer months if you're getting out and about in the sunshine, or if you live somewhere some, like hot and beautiful like Florida, you probably won't need any supplements. Thankfully, you can't overdose on vitamin D from the sunshine. Please give this video a like if you found it helpful and hit the subscribe button for new videos every single week and hit the bell to get notified when I post new videos on Tuesdays. Please let me know in the comments what you enjoyed about this video or what you want to learn more about. I've just started posting on BitChute and Library. If you prefer to watch me on different platforms, please go and take a look. Thanks for watching.